in this video, I'll show you how to construct a frequency distribution table given a data set. A frequency distribution is a two column table that summarizes a list of measurements or responses. Column one of your table is a list of classes. These classes can be single numbers, intervals of numbers, or categories. Column two of the frequency distribution is the frequency column. The numbers in this column represent the number of measurements or responses that were measurements or responses from their corresponding numeric classes or category classes. For example, suppose in a previous semester a random sample of my students were asked what their age was. The frequency distribution here summarizes the list of ages that made up the sample. The first column in the table is a list of age intervals or age classes. The frequency number in row 2 of the table is 68. This means there were 68 students in the sample between and including ages 15 and 24. From the next row of the frequency distribution, we see that there were 72 students who said they were between and including ages 25 and 34. There were 34 students between and including ages 35 and 47, and so on. So that gives you an example of a frequency distribution. Let's go ahead and take a look at a data set and make a frequency distribution for the data set. So here's our data set that we're going to be working with. Uh, the, the sample data gives us prices in dollars of 30 portable GPS devices. And the problem instructs us to make a frequency distribution that has seven classes. The list of steps for how to construct a frequency distribution using interval classes is given here. Step one, enter the data into the calculator and sort the data in ascending fashion. In a previous video, I showed you how to do this step, how to enter data in and sort it. Uh, take a look at the comments section of this video, and I'll put a link to that video, the sorting video, uh, in the comments section. So step one is to enter the data in and sort it. I've done that here already in list one. The next step is to decide on the number of classes. Usually you'll choose between five and twenty classes. If you happen to be doing a textbook type homework problem or a test question, for a lot of the problems they just tell you what the number of classes should be. So once you've decided on the number of classes or you're told what the number of classes will be, then move to step three, which is finding the class width. So we're gonna find the class width with this formula, maximum minus minimum divided by the number of classes. You can of course find your maximum and your minimum number in your data set using your sorted data in your calculator. Once we make this calculation for class width, we'll round the class width number up to the next whole number. For example, if the formula gives us a class width of 24.1, we're going to round that up to 25. So this is a this is a special round off rule that applies to class width. And of course, this round off rule goes against the standard round off rule. If we get 24.1, we're going to round that up. That's not something you would normally do. Uh, but for class width, that's what we do. So let's go ahead and make a calculation for class width here. So we'll go ahead and use the formula for class width. We're going to pull the maximum and minimum values off of the calculator's list, the sorted data. Uh, right now my cursor is in list one, row one. 
of the sorted data and so that gives us the minimum value which is 59 so if I want to scroll up a couple of times then I can get to the find out what the maximum is it's the end of the list here so the maximum ended up being 450 uh, so for this formula we'll go ahead and write that this is equal to 450 minus 59 and we're going to divide that by the number of classes. The number of classes is given along with the statement of the problem. And we're told to use seven classes. So back over here, that means our denominator is a seven. And we'll go ahead and calculate that with the calculator here. So to quit the list environment, I'm going to press second mode, quit to the home screen. So now I'm going to go ahead and calculate class width. I took the maximum and I subtracted the minimum from that. So now I'm going to divide that by seven classes. And I'm getting 55.8. We're going to round this up to 56. Okay. Got our class width. What is the next step? The next step is to write down column one of our table, the class limit numbers. Write down the lower class limit numbers first. Afterwards, write down the upper class limit numbers. So to do this, we're going to first write down or use the minimum value in the data as the lower class limit of the first interval class. So that means over here we're going to write 59 for the first lower class limit. After that we're going to add class width to the minimum to find and write down the lower class limit number for the second class. So I'm over here on the calculator, class width is 56. I'm taking the minimum 59, adding class width to that. That gives me 115 which is the next lower class limit. Take the 115, add class width to it. That gives us 171. So the next lower class limit is 171. So we're going to keep on adding class width to our, class, our lower class limit to get the next lower class limit. And we're going to continue to do this until we've got seven lower class limits. Okay, once you've got the lower class limits written down, then it's time to write the upper class limits. So to find the upper class limit of your first class, we're just going to subtract 1 from 115. That'll give us 114. That'll be the upper class limit of the first class. Recall that class limits are separated by a distance equal to the class width. So what that means here is we can add class width of 56 to the 114 to get the next upper class limit or we can simply subtract one from this 171 here to get that the next upper class limit is 170. So now we need to write down the 
upper class limit of the last class. To get that number, we'll take the upper class limit of this second to last class, 394, and we'll add class width to that. And we're going to get that that's 450. So I noticed that 450 is also the maximum value in the data set. Will it always be the case that the this last number is equal to the maximum number in the data set? No, it won't always be the case that that's, that that's equal to the last number in your data set. Your upper class limit of your last class, this number, it'll be either the maximum or some other number which is larger than the maximum. So what I'm trying to tell you here is don't always expect for this number to be the maximum. This was just a coincidence that this happened. In most cases, this number is not equal to the maximum. But there's no rule saying it cannot be equal to the maximum. Okay, so we've got half of our table. The next step in the problem is to fill out the frequency column, the second column in our table. So we're going to do step five here. We're going to use our sorted data from the calculator to write down the numbers in the frequency column. After that, we're going to double check our work. So I've got the sorted data here in list one. We now just need to count how many numbers in the sorted data belong to this first interval class. How many numbers in the sorted data are numbers between and including 59 and 114? So we'll go ahead and use our arrow key on our calculator, scroll through the data and find out. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 entries. So that means the frequency of this first class is 5. To get the frequency for the next class, We'll use our sorted data and our arrow key to count the number of data values that are prices between and including 115 and $170. So use your arrow key, scroll through the sorted data. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight entries. So eight data entries belong to this second interval class. Now we'll count the number of entries in the in the third class. So use your arrow key again, scroll through this order data here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and looks like there's only six. So the next class are numbers between and including $227 and $282. Let's count how many entries we have. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So five goes into that interval class. The next interval class from $283 to $338. Let's count the number of data entries that belong to that class. So we've got one beginning with 300, two, and it looks like there's only two. In the next class, it begins at 339. So we've got one entry beginning at 350. And that's the only entry in that class. So there's one frequency of one for that second to last class. Then finally, the last class has one, two, three entries. Okay, so it has a frequency of three. Okay, so one thing to double check here is that the sum of the frequency column is equal to the sample size, which of course is 30. So let's just do a quick check. 
add up the numbers in this frequency column and just double check do they equal the sample size 30 and of course they do so uh, what we ought to do now is probably double check all of our work make sure we've done this accurately okay so there you have it that's how you make the frequency distribution table with interval classes